Are your hands clean? Save lives, clean your hands is the sister initiative that we developed since 2009 in order to make not only the ministries of health participate, but also whole healthcare workers in the world that would like to participate. To this day, the 5th of May, which was chosen for the very simple reason of the five moments for health hygiene and the five mode multimodal implementation strategy, the 5th of May, through this annual day focused on health hygiene improvement in healthcare, the initiative prom promotes continual sustainable best practice in hand hygiene at the point of care in healthcare settings all around the world. For those institutions interested, you can access our website and register your institution so that you can participate into this strategy. As of last month, 30 of May 2012, more than 15,000 healthcare facilities from 159 countries from around the world have committed to the strategy by registering their institution, which represents 13 million healthcare staff and around 4 million patient beds all over the world, endorsing the strategy and using the WHO strategy to, for hand hygiene promotion that we have developed initially locally and now is a global strategy. The use of alcohol-based hand rub at the institution in Geneva over the 70 year of the hand rub promotion using the Geneva model is shown on this slide. Compliance moving as shown on the horizontal axis from 48% to 78% and year by year increase in the, the amount of alcohol-based hand rub that we are using at our institution as let's say a surrogate marker for hand hygiene improvement. But as you can see, we are not at the end of the story. We continue to improve and we continue to use more and more hand hygiene all over the time. Now, you have the prediction for 2012 in green, and as you can see, we increased by around 20 times, 20-fold the amount that we were using before starting the strategy. When you look at that, of course, you can ask to yourself, alcohol-based hand rubs, what is the market? What is the global market for such a strategy? Well, if you think about the number of admissions per year in hospitals, according to WHO estimates, huge number of admissions. If you think about the use of alcohol-based hand rub at our own institution, more than 200,000 bottles in the year 2006. If you apply these to the rest of the world, you obtain a very, very, very large number of bottles. 1.5 billion, and it was in 2006. And what about asking for one-tenth of a dime, one-tenth of a francs per bottle? Of course, will be today very, very rich. You will call, actually, a huge opportunity has been missed by our institution to actually protect the invention, protect the innovation, and actually make sure that we could do the technology transfer. But this was not the primary objective of the study. And what about increasing consumption? In 2009, volumes sold were exploding. Why was it? Because you may remember between May 2009 and August 2009, there was the, the, this H1N1, so-called poor sign influenza at the beginning, where alcohol-based hand rub production by companies increased between 5 to 40-fold to the point that some companies were out of stock in several places around the world. I had to call some companies telling them, stop selling alcohol-based hand rub in supermarkets. Please keep reserves for hospitals so that we make sure that wherever this is the most useful, we could always have alcohol-based hand rub available. Well, what I try to suggest to you is that to have good ideas is not enough. When innovation is coming, you need to think about it differently. You need to protect your ID. Why is it so important? 
Not only, as I told you earlier, because you could make money with the ID, but you could improve the ID. We could, you could protect the ID. You could really do what is called technology transfer with the ID. You move from an ID to a patent, to a license, to protecting your ID, and maybe to have a startup developing your product to make sure you could benefit, people could benefit of it all over the world. Technology transfer is extremely important. Well, here, somebody could say, hello, Dr. P, now has become Professor P. You could have become very rich. Yes, of course. But the most important is that nowadays, everybody could enjoy the innovation. Everybody could benefit from this very important change in clinical care, as you may understand. This was my first part, entitled From Local to Global. Let me now discuss with you why is it that Switzerland could be seen as so unique in innovation. Well, let me summarize this by saying one nation, as you may know, three or even four languages in Switzerland, one life sciences cluster, as suggested by this slide. The number of biotech companies in Switzerland is increasing over time. As you can see, this is in par particularly true for developers, for companies who are developing tools as compared to suppliers that remain very, very stable over time. Biotech startups created in Switzerland between 1995 and 2010. As you can see, this number of biotech companies are increasing over time. They were already pretty good at the beginning. Whether they are producing therapeutics in, in, a, in a pink color or whether they are producing R&D and services in red color, as you can see over time. The next slide shows MedTech key facts in Switzerland. Company, more than 700 suppliers and manufacturers, 650 traders, distributors, and service providers, gross revenue around um, 23 billion Swiss francs, approximately uh, 19 billion euros. The growth rates is between 5 to 10 percent annually. Export more than two thirds of all med tech products in Switzerland are exported. 5% of all exports from Switzerland are MedTech products. Speaking of employees, it represents 49,000 employees. 75% of all companies have less than 50 employees. I will come back on these later. Research and development expenditures, around 10.6% of the turnover is for R&Ds and 25% of the product portfolio is developed in the la and was developed in the last three years. Speaking of innovation, more than 50% of companies are engaged in network innovation and collaboration across industry and academia functions very, very well in Switzerland. On the next slide, you see total per capita expenditure in research and development in US dollars. And as you can see, Switzerland is actually at the top of the pyramid in, uh, in 2008. This, well, these are the last data available from 2008. And as you can see, we have Switzerland, then Sweden, Luxembourg, uh, Finland, Denmark, and US is only in position number 10. Next slide shows biotechnology patents per capita over time. Switzerland between, 200, uh, we, between 2000 and 2009. And as you can see, Switzerland is the number one uh, country in red on the graph, uh, followed by Denmark and then the United States. The next slide shows the European countries' innovation performance here listed. Uh, from uh, actually left to right with the modest innovators on the left hand sides and the best innovators or the innovation leaders actually on the right hand side of the slide and as you can see little Switzerland is actually uh, ranked number one in these European countries innovation performance uh, activities 
that are based and measured uh, using a composite indicators, building data on 24 different indicators, uh, going from a lowest possible performance of zero to a maximum performance of one. Let me show you now the Swiss Life Sciences survey uh, that was conducted in 2007, and uh, I have selected for you a few data. The biotech industry in Switzerland is divided in, let's say, five different uh, major regions. The regions on the extreme uh, west of the country, the so-called Bio Alps 59, Bio Valley, uh, uh, ba ba Bas Basel 60, Greater Zurich area uh, 70, other around 55, and Bio Plo Plo Ticino around 14, as you can see. The next slide shows actually the basic biotech companies breakdown by subcategories, with the major categories being diagnostics and analytical services, 22%, therapeutics, around 16%. Uh, environment, agro, bio, and cosmetics, around 40%. Contract research and manufacturing, again, uh, around 40%. And bioinformatics and bioelectronics, around 8%. On the next slide, you will find the product development of Swiss biotech companies break down by development phases. And as you can see, 92 uh, actually were from the phase of discovery and preclinical states, 49 for phase 1, 10 for phase 2, and 21 for phase 3. The next slide shows the foundation of Swiss biotech companies between 1995 and 2007. The breakdown is given by the main categories. In blue, biotechnology, therapeutics, in yellow, biotechnology, R&D services, and in, in light blue, actually biotechnology, other uh, area. As you can see, uh, the development is pretty interesting and pretty uh, valuable. Here is the size of biotech companies by the number of employees. As you can see, uh, as of the, the 2007 survey, of course, 43% uh, include between 1 and 10 employees, 28% uh, between 11 and 50 employees, and uh, uh, more uh, and 29%, let's say, a third more than 50 employees. On this slide, you see the ownership of Swiss biotech companies, and the breakdown is given according to public and private sector, and of course, private sector is a large part and a large majority, with 92% being actually from the private sector and 6% from the public. Public core biotech companies are indicated on the left-hand side of the slide for the majority, uh, uh, and for 2007 and 2008, the, the three last companies that were actually created. Here you have the Swiss biotech companies as uh, the source of foundation. And this is, to me, a very important uh, slide. Because as you can see, the large majority, 51%, are spin-offs from university. So it means that university are actually pushing for the spin-off and that the success of the science is certainly explain explaining for this spin-off. 14% are subsidiary, uh, independent foundations in 16%, and spin-off from companies in 